This video has been produced for the EDUC 5305G Authentic Assessment course at the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, Wendy Barber, Professor. As stated in the course outline, Authentic Assessment is not about final exams or bell curves. The focus of this course is to research and analyze and apply a variety of assessment techniques and applications that are based on the notion that people learn most effectively when they are able to relate to what they are learning and base this with their previous knowledge. Assessment is defined within the context of stimulating authentic life tasks. As we can briefly look at assessment from the last 2200 years, we will see that at its core, assessment is a product of its time and the society that it comes from. In Mattis and O'Dwyer's paper, A Short History of Performance Assessment, Lessons Learned, they argue that changes in assessment technology over the last two centuries from an oral tradition to written from qualitative, qualitative to quantitative, from short answers to multiple choice, were all geared towards increasing efficiency and making the assessment system more manageable, standardized, easily administered, objective, reliable, comparable, and inexpensive, particularly as the numbers of examinees have increased over the last 200 years. So, if assessment has been a victim of our industrial age education system, how did it look before the 18th century? It would seem that assessment is the product of its surroundings and socioeconomic realities. In ancient China, testing was first introduced as a policy mechanism in 210 BCE. There were only four ways to sample a student's behavior. First, you ask the person, person to supply an oral uh, and written test. Second, you ask the person to produce a product, some sort of portfolio of work, usually artwork, a research paper, or some sort of product or piece of art. And thirdly, you would require the person to answer some sort of test with multiple choice or yes and no answers. By the Middle Ages, all the way to the 19th century in the European context, during this time, we consider two kinds of performance value assessments in Europe. Those used to certify guild members who worked with their hands, and those to access gentlemen who studied the seven liberal arts of grammar, logic, music, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, and astronomy, built almost entirely in a qualitative form as numbers were used for effect, not accuracy. It wasn't until the Crusades and the opening of foreign trade that numeracy was taken more seriously. In the guild system, producing a masterpiece after many years of training as an apprentice was the final big assessment, so more or less years of work for the one big test. With the coming of the Industrial Age, and when items could be produced uh, en masse, the guild had seen its best days behind it. The idea of exams for those studying the liberal arts did exist, but were predominantly oral debates around the work of Thomas Aquinas, Lombard, Comister, and the Bible. While rote memorization was a large part of education and assessment, the deeper interpretation of these texts were the core of the final assessment. By the 19th century, the use of testing as a political, administrative, accountability technique can be seen as industrial capitalism's developing commitment to standardization, uniformity, precision, clarity, quantification, and rational tactics. In fact, the factory model for schools with its techniques of conformity and confinement surveillance and the perpetual supervision of behavior and tasks came to be the standard. So, if, an ass if assessment is the tool of an age, 
perhaps multiple choice machine score tests made perfect sense in the industrial age. After all, students were no more than parts of a larger machine moving down the assembly line in order of their birthday. But if we now consider ourselves part of the information age, students need to be assessed on more than what they know at one specific time, but how well they can adapt and keep learning. To achieve this, we need to provide an education setting that promotes higher order thinking, problem solving, and a desire to delve deeper into the issues the 21st century will present.